What's up, Crypto Legends? The price of Bitcoin got a huge rejection yesterday at the Valley Area Low from this old trading range. We can see this massive rejection getting back beneath the lower high resistance trend line, not giving confidence that this is a successful breakout. Today, we also had a flash crash here based on bad news from the hardware wallet Ledger. Now, we are going to analyze this mess on the chart because it's very confusing. We had a massive recovery after this flash crash that happened today. Now, what is the technical levels that we need to be paying attention in the next coming hours and days, guys, for possibly continuation to the upside? Or if we break this level, we are likely to get another heavy drop. And I'll explain why, because it has been respected very well today guys we're also talking about the halving dates also something very interesting that kevin vents kevin svensson mentioned on twitter today which is very interesting and i want to talk about that bringing a massive year in 2024 which is likely going to be bullish for the markets so make sure to stay tuned Hi there, Andy here. Welcome back to another episode. Let's dive in through the price of Bitcoin because what a mess of a chart we did have today. Huge, massive drop. It seems like the ledger bad news did create this flash crash, but an instant recovery. We were very cautious with this scenario, realizing that this could be a massive V-shaped recovery. We do not trade, okay, FUD or FOMO news because it is just not reliable on the chart. We are technical traders, and once we have a little bit of FUD or good news, out there in social media, we just need to be extremely cautious with our technical decisions. So we created this big mess on the chart, a big massive dump and pump straight to the top of this dump right over here. Now, let's go back to the technical levels. By the way, yesterday we had a massive runner here. As you can see, we were very cautious because we were starting to face a lot of resistance right over here, which is the valley area low of this trading range. So big, massive rejection here, getting beneath lower high trend line. That this move to the upside was just not powerful enough. There was no volume. So very choppy. We we're still on the sidelines in the Legends trading community. And I'll explain a long trade setup that was talked about today in the Legends, of course. I did get into that long position on Bybit just to make some quick little profits of a few hundred dollars. It was basically a scalp day trade as you know, by breaking a level, it was a breakout trade. And I'll explain that also in this episode. Guys, remember Bybit, you do have a great bonus down below of $30,000. And it's also the five year anniversary where they do have a trading competition. You do have the lucky draw as well, where you can win an iPhone and also some US dollar tether. Check it out, guys. Link is in the description to join that five year anniversary competition. If you cannot use Bybit for trading, I would suggest using Mexi. They have very low fees and also a great bonus by using the link down below. Very easy, friendly to use. Let's dive in here straight into the scenario and the levels here for Bitcoin, guys, because what a mess of a day. I was very much aware with the legend saying, you know, I just don't like this chart today. Very hard to trade. Uh, we stay away based on, you know, these massive dumps right over here. I was very likely this was going to be, a, a you know, a V-shaped recovery because based on these FUD news coming out, okay, people get scared suddenly and, you know, create massive sell orders. And then obviously it is instantly straight bought back up. Now I'm going to explain this level that was big support right over here today that did manage to get a little bit of a rally here, as you can see on the chart. Then we got the drop and it maintained a little bit as resistance. We did get that level. Okay. The, the $42,700 range. You know, why was this important level? It was basically the previous day value area high. And of course, losing this level was going to be, you know, something to pay attention as, you know, it might go to much lower levels. However, this flash crash and instant bounce was no business for me to get into any type of trade. Of course, we could have speculated in a quick short position and be very defensive, realizing that we could have that massive move to the upside. But let me explain you right away why I entered into a FOMO long breakout trade, uh, which was just 
really obvious that this was going to happen. And that was based on, you know, getting back above here, the previous day value area low and this level that has been massive support and resistance just today. And I said to the community, look, if we were to get successfully above this level again, it is a long opportunity to come all the way up to the highs, basically, this one or even this one. And if we reject from any of these two, it's the moment to take profit. So that was a really nice move of four or $500 where we could have taken advantage here. Right now, we are coming down to the support level. So we need to hold this level. This could potentially get a pretty nice bounce here in the next coming hours because it is basically the lower high resistance trend line. We got an instant recovery from this drop, okay? So we can see that we did not manage to hold here as support. This was a big, massive fake out, guys. We do fake out from the chart. Sometimes we can see that massive wick here, just hitting the valley area low and getting back beneath the zone here. And you're just having this volatility based on the bad news that we had today. So nevertheless, this bad news is nothing on the chart. It's just a bunch of volatility that is not going to give us any good levels. However, the good levels still maintain there as the previous day value area low, maintaining our support as resistance. We break through here. We're testing the highs. Easy peasy trade to understand. There's a big move here to happen if we were to get above this level of resistance. This is why I entered that quick, long scalp day trade scenario, okay? all the way up to the highs here to take most of the profits and you know maintaining a bit of that position open here still adding a little bit to see if we are going to get that bounce from this zone now like i said it is interesting to see the next coming hours because yes i think that you know the price does look quite bullish it does look like that we could have a runner here to the upside that is also based on liquidity guys we got a massive amount of liquidity above $44,000 suddenly here. And it seems like a lot of people are bearish and are shorting. And there's a lot of liquidity sitting above 44 k So maybe the price is going to manage to get above that level. I think it is definitely a possibility. However, you know, we do have a lot of resistance. What resistance do we have here that we need to take into consideration? Well, it's basically the point of control of this area. We also have a fresh daily printed level here that hasn't been tapped. And that level is also in confluence with the 7.8 Fibonacci from the pivot high to the pivot low. I mean, there is a few dollars of difference here. However, it's going to be very interesting how we hit this zone. Nevertheless, I think it's going to be smashed. Probably we're going to get a small, quick little reaction of a few hundred dollars, maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars but I do expect the price to get one more leg up to get above 44K to claim that liquidity here and also hit the value area high of this trading zone that is also with a daily level that hasn't been tapped. That is gonna be a very interesting zone right over here. It's at the 0.88 Fibonacci. We could be just sweeping that liquidity above all of these lower highs right over here on the chart and get a massive rejection. I think I prefer much more that level here at $44,250 to possibly get into a quick short scalp if we do reject from that level. Remember, for these trades, you need to be very quick. You need to be very talented, get in, get out, be defensive. The moment you hit this level and get rejected, that is the moment you want to jump in very quick as you get the rejection. Of course, you're not going to get into a short trade as you've rejected already a couple of hundred dollars. You're late. This is only a couple of hundred dollar possible short scenario. And be very defensive. That is the strongest level that I do see here on the chart, okay? It is the 44,200 range where we have value area high of this trading zone. Value areas from zones, guys, are very powerful. Look at the rejection that we did get here yesterday from that value area low of this trading zone. So value area high is in confluence with the daily level and also the 0.88 Fibonacci and also the lower highs here from this consolidation. Pay attention to this zone for a quick 
little scalp rejection, okay? It's a trading plan, and that rejection could come all the way down here to the daily level here, the other daily level that could maintain as support. So it is a few hundred dollars here as a potential scalp. I am looking very well at that level. I got my alert set, and very likely if I am awake, of course, if this doesn't happen overnight, and happens tomorrow, I'll be looking for a quick little scalp here at that range and maybe possibly longing that old daily here if we do have continuation to create new yearly highs. Let's see how the price develops, guys. Of course, if the price of Bitcoin, guys, let's talk about that major support. If we lose previous day, valley area low, get back beneath this lower high resistance trend line. Sorry about this massive volatility. This is just a mess in the chart based on the news. But if we start losing these technical levels, it will not be looking good for Bitcoin, guys. I am going to say that if we start losing here, this level, okay, previous day value area low at 42,700 with some significant volume kicking in, I think the price will likely come down to the low $40,000 range, okay? So pay attention here. If we start breaking down with high volume, I would expect the price to get continuation to the downside. So there could be some good short day trade scenarios on the retracement here, managing risk, of course, with your stop loss above the previous day value area high, managing that risk. But overall, this could be a significant large move to the downside, okay? We are technical traders. We can not only be bullish or bearish, guys. We trade based on levels. Let's dive in right away here on the higher time frame because this is very interesting. These vertical lines is when the halving event happens. And every single time after the halving, we enter a huge massive bull run. We can see here 2012 after November 2012, massive bull run. After, you know, uh, June 2016, there's the other halving, the other halving right over here in 2020. We have the one here in April of 2024 very likely to get that bullish momentum. I want to talk about something very interesting that Kevin Svensson talked about here on Twitter. And, you know, basically the election year, shout out to him, by the way, great content here on Twitter that he provides. Um, basically what he's talking about is that the election year, I've, I've never noticed this, is the same year of the halving, slightly after the halving, okay? And we can see Usually election years are very bullish for the market because, you know, basically the president wants, you know, the economy to do well and they want they want more votes and they want to print liquidity into the market. Of course, bringing, you know, the, the economy stronger and the economy needs money and needs printed money. So, you know, infinite growth. So the economy works. And that what usually happens on every election year, which is every four years. And funny enough, it is also the same years as the Bitcoin halving, right? 2012, 2016, 2020. We also have one in, in, in 2024. So bringing that election year, you can see the stock market after an election year, okay? During that election year also, and after election year, it is quite, quite bullish. Uh, I would expect the S&P, you know, the general markets to be extremely bullish as well as it is an election year. And also Bitcoin and crypto to be bullish after 2024. Of course, be cautious. There could be those pullbacks during the halving or just slightly before the halving or just slightly after the halving. OK, maybe January, February. You know, it's going to be some interesting months. However, let me just quickly explain here how we are looking more similar than not the previous cycle, but more the cycle here from 2016, okay, to 2017. Why is that? Well, basically the momentum that we are gaining here into the halving. And I just want to talk about if the price were to get a pullback because, you know, the price has been extremely bullish for the last few weeks, okay? And not having a big major pullback. If we do take a look at the previous cycles or any charts, guys, when we do get those pullbacks, okay, that we have certain resistance levels that turn into support. And we can see that we are following something very similar from the cycle here from 2015, 2016. Now, if we were to get a pullback, guys, the level that I would be buying Bitcoin quite aggressively would be that 30 to $32,000 range. It is basically highs that usually turn into resistance. This was also back in November, December, where the price was continuing to pump here very aggressively. 
and got a big bounce, okay? Did get a massive corrective move to that level here and then continued to the upside here entering into the halving. So if we were to get that corrective move in the coming weeks, you know, getting close to the halving, I would say that we are very likely to hold $30,000 as support and that would be the moment that would start dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin very aggressively again because we're likely to hold. However, if it doesn't hold and we move to lower levels, just imagine that, well, we just have to buy some more cheap Bitcoin, guys. Not much more to be said. I think 2024 will likely be bullish during the year. Maybe Q1 is going to be a bit bumpy because we don't know what's going to happen. But overall, halving is in April. We have the election year likely to be bullish during the 2024 year guys in my personal opinion so everything points out that it should be good but it could be a bumpy ride entering into 2024 not much more to be said guys thank you very much for joining and i'll see you in the next one